Humans use narratives in nearly every aspect of our lives, whether we're sharing the latest neighborhood gossip or debating theories about the origins of the universe. Narratives are our way of giving order and meaning to the overwhelmingly complex and often mysterious world we inhabit. Any narrative, however mundane, reveals a great deal not just about the stylistic preferences of its author, but also about the ontological, epistemological, and ethical assumptions that prevail in the author's cultural context. Narratives enable us to account for our decisions and actions, and they also shape the decisions and actions we take. In this unit, we will explore environmental narratives and how they shape environmental politics. The concept of environmental narratives was developed by scholars whose work bridges political ecology with science and technology studies, or STS. STS, like political ecology, is a transdisciplinary field, meaning it includes scholars trained in history, political science, anthropology, sociology, geography, and other disciplines. Scholars of STS aim to understand scientific knowledge as a socio-cultural product that is shaped by the context in which it is produced. STS scholars, therefore, examine scientific knowledge in relation to social identities, cultural differences, and power dynamics. Narratives play a central role in STS analyses because scientific knowledge, like any other form of knowledge, circulates in the form of narratives, and those narratives in turn reflect the assumptions, priorities, and social positioning of their authors. Drawing on insights from STS, Political ecologists trace how our knowledge of the environment circulates in the form of such narratives. All environmental knowledge circulates in narrative form. In this unit, however, we're interested in the dominant environmental narratives that shape public perceptions, regulatory policies, and governance institutions. More specifically still, we're interested in how overly simplistic environmental narratives lead to misguided policies and how such policies often serve to further disadvantage marginalized populations. Let's think about an example. In their 2008 book, Forest Guardians, Forest Destroyers, Tim Forsyth and Andrew Walker examine the environmental narratives that shape forestry policy in Thailand. Their analysis identifies a predominant narrative about the role that ethnic minority peoples play in forest conservation and degradation in Thailand's hinterlands. According to this narrative, certain ethnic groups are prone to be guardians of the forest, while others are prone to destroy it. In reality, the authors argue, the causes of forest degradation are much more complex. Forest degradation, they argue, is tied to political and economic processes that extend far beyond the uplands and the people who live there. The overly simplistic narrative that portrays certain groups as forest guardians and others as forest destroyers has led to policies that place undue restrictions on upland people's livelihoods. These restrictions, in turn, reinforce their socioeconomic marginalization and accelerate the dispossession of their land. In short, environmental narratives, and thus environmental knowledge, reflect broader social structures and political processes. As you'll encounter in this week's readings, they often serve to rationalize efforts by states to extend their control over new territories, resources, and peoples. Does this mean that dominant environmental narratives are nothing more than cynical fabrications used to justify dispossession or subjugation? Certainly not. It does mean, however, that our analysis of environmental knowledge should never lose sight of the power relations that surround it.